Wow, that is actually. Nice. I know it vibrates in your head. So is this? This is that your. That didn't on, sound right. And Pause. this is more on. Yeah. Okay. You have two. I am. I am actually trying to learn here, and I, I've learned a few valuable things so far. Like you can't have enough flux. It's one yeah. of them. Yeah. So here's uh, the thing. Paul will use this amount of flux, like this, right? Ah, uh, right. This is Paul. That's okay. Yeah. This is proper. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> okay. It didn't have fan spin. You put your soldering iron ah, to the board. Right, it had right, fan spin. Right. All right, everybody, you're in for a treat today. We got somebody here from North Carolina to do a board repair. That's right. Um, I've never actually done any kind of repair. I've only made things worse. Well, there's, one, there's a place to start. <laughs> so, so here we are, sir. All right. All right. So, so what is, what's the story of the board? What do I know about it? What do you it? see? Let's see. I'll switch over to overhead I camera. I see red. I see, oh, there you go. That's a good shot. So I see some of, uh, let's point with this. Whatever that is, either either a um, high C, like, you know, the fruit drink. Yeah. Or something else. I don't know. Uh, that looks like maybe. That's Wi-Fi mm -hmm. card. That's optional. No, but I mean, like, the you see that, right? Yeah, the red stuff. Is that mud or what? Is this <laughs> from a construction site? Uh, that looks like the sticker stuff leaked off. Okay. That's Wi-Fi. They don't need Wi-Fi. They can use Ethernet. They have All a dongle right. for that. Um, that's corroded by the screen I area. That, yeah. So that's going to cause no backlight. This is corrosion by a circuit that may, that's a power circuit. That's going to create the main power rail that starts the okay. computer turning on. That I actually don't know off the top of my head what it is. Which one? Where, where, how about that? where would you start on this? So you have you have corrosion I, on the Wi-Fi card, the screen, where and a power I, rail. Where would I start? Is yeah, so I, I would start with the new board. <laughs> <laughs> Isn't that cheaper? I don't know. You're, you I don't know. So you think? Let's give everyone a perspective. I guess from so if you looked at this, if you had the rough estimate, how long it's gonna, how long you're gonna stare at this thing before you fix it? Like fifteen minutes. Fifteen or so. minutes. Okay. So everyone. I want to remember that for when Lewis has to come in and fix it because it takes me an hour to do one thing. So first thing we have to do is come up with an order of operations. Okay. So you have some corrosion on here. You have corrosion by the screen, Wi-Fi card, and a power rail. Right. Which one is the one that you would address first? I feel like the power rail is... Yeah, it's Maslow's, hierarchy of, it's Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So first you need to turn on, then you need a screen, right. then you need internet. Right, right. So... So power rail, so that's the power rail. And then what did you say these? That's for the screen. That's for okay. the backlight. Are those caps or what? They could use a flashlight. They don't. Yeah, th okay. those are capacitors. Okay. So what we're going to do, switch over to microscope. Have you used a microscope before? Uh, sort of, yeah. All right, this is going to be fun. Not competently. I have used one. <laughs> we have a similar setup. Not as, not as nice, but. Okay. That's it. So you're going to move this to where your eyes are, uh -huh, wherever your yes, eyes yeah. are. Now, the beauty of this is 90% of this job, Steve, uh, yeah. is flux and hot air. It's kind of like being a janitor. Like, it's not, you know, it's just like clean up so an aisle seven. It. Okay. Yeah, so this is kind of like your Mr. Clean over here. Yeah, so this, <laughs> sure. this is kind of like, like bleach, and then this is your mop. Okay. You just kind of point it at the area and see so you see should start to melt. Right, 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 right. Uh, okay. So, um, so what, uh, how do you choose between flux and hot air? What's your, I, I want to make this clear for, Everyone and whoever's watching too, like this. I I was telling Lewis, I don't have much soldering or board repair or any kind of experience. Like even working with flux, not much. Experience so there's two it. things to so, know. So I'm looking forward to it. The first is you can never use too much of this. Okay. There's no <laughs> okay. such thing as too much of this. It'll right. always just burn away. So you could literally just pile it on Paul there. Paul seems to disagree with you earlier. On he seems like seems like he thinks you maybe use a little too much. We're polar opposites in that particular okay. area. You can never use too much flux. Okay. And then once you have the flux on there, you're going to heat the board from far away like this. Got it. But yet, and then get a little closer, and then get a little closer, and then get closer. Stay there for a bit. Once you see that it's melted, take it away. Got it. Okay. And then we'll see if it turns on. Got it. So once you the see first thing I need to do is get you a flux container that has the proper amount of flux. Because that, 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 that's barely any so left. So a lot. lot. Yeah. So okay. you, you, <laughs> Got it. You need this. And we're planning to use all of this, right? A good amount of it. No, honestly. we're gonna use all of it. You said, you said it's only go only good if it's. A we're gonna get along really well here. All right. So <laughs> now this is the hot air station over here. So okay. every time you put the hot air back in here, yeah. it's going to cool down, and then when you take it out, it's gonna turn on. Okay. So if you don't burn this keyboard, I will consider today a win. <laughs> you want me to push the keyboard back? 
That, <laughs> Maybe you, we should push the keyboard. I, I hate that thing. It makes so much fucking noise. So if you burn it, it actually would be a win. <laughs> okay. I can't stand those mechanical right. keyboards that go the clickety click. So I don't know how well they can hear you now that uh, the thing's running. The, the fume. I guess that's the fume extractor that yeah. we're hearing. Yeah. All right. So let me look at this closer. Am I targeting? Sort of that area right there? Yeah. Okay. So what we want to do, do is... We, do we care about that dot uh, up at those two caps or those MLCCs right there? Which dot? Uh, right here that looks like liquid or glue or something. Oh, no, that, that, that's embedded. The water can't get under there. Okay. So that, that, that's some like some uh, protective bubble thing that, oh, app, okay. that, that they put over those so two caps for whatever reason. Don't worry about reason. it. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, let me test. What's the... One sec. I'm going to get a water... Okay, we're gonna. Tr Lewis has has abandoned me. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> so I don't know what his stream setup is. It sounds he was telling me that he's um, recording himself on his mic, and then he's gonna, I guess, edit it and put it up on his YouTube channel later. So you said they can't hear you right now, right? On your mic. They can only hear me through yours. Okay. Is that too much? What What are you thinking? That's not enough. That's too much. Okay, Lewis is gonna. <laughs> that's that's not all right. Okay. That's how I apply thermal paste. Yes. That's, okay, got it. So apply flux the way Apple applies thermal paste. <laughs> okay. Okay. Got it. I can definitely. All you had to say was do it like you apply thermal paste, and I would have been on board. So am I switching to the? Yeah. Air so gun? now hot air. Yep. Okay. So pull it up. Does it automatically turn on? Yep. Okay. That thing automatically goes on. You hear it. All right. And this is where the it shows you what the temperature is over here. It's going to go up to 500 degrees in a moment. Is that a C? Yeah. There we go. And, yep. and what's what's my objective right now? Melt the... Like, so see this water shit over here? Yeah. We're waiting for this whole blob to look like a giant thing of Should water. Farther away, closer, or is that okay? Well, what you do is you're going to do is first, you're going to preheat the board uh -huh. before you can actually heat the chip. So uh, if you put okay. 500 Celsius on the chip, <laughs> you're not really going it's, to... It's 500 Celsius right on the chip. The board is cold, so the board is going to absorb all the heat so you're not melting the solder. And the chip itself is going to burn. So you want to slowly get the board preheated from a little further away. So is this an okay kind of distance right now? A little, a little too far. Too far. A little okay. closer in there. Okay. A little closer in there. Lewis has uh, advised me that there's nothing I can screw up that he can't fix. And uh, I hope he's right. I mean Paul by that. <laughs> he says he means Paul by that. <laughs> All right. Now, see so over what, here, what you see this? For? Like, you yeah. see a solder joint, but then you see that this is just the pile of shit over here? Yeah, yeah. On the bottom of the chip? Right. Uh, when you reflow, when this gets reflowed, that's going to go away. And also make sure that the nozzle is pointing right at that chip. Which you can chip get a little, specifically? Uh, the black, this little black rectangle. Got it, okay. And go closer in on it. How close? Right here? I would say even a little bit closer than that. Okay. And have it there for about 10 seconds. Three, four, five, six. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Should I stop? Yep. Okay, okay. now take it away. All right, socket it. Mm-hmm. Okay. And now it's going to cool off. Now, the, right now, the air is running through it, but the heater is turned off so that this doesn't boil and burn Got itself. Got it. Okay. Now, the next step is going to be kind of like filing your nails. So the way I like to describe it, these are kind of like your nails over here. Okay. Lewis has right to re-repair this board. Hey, have some confidence in him, Jim. <laughs> this isn't Australia. We do shit right here. So... <laughs> <laughs> Australian currency. <laughs> so it's going to be this iron over here uh -huh. has uh, all these irons that I have have special tips that looks different. So this iron is shaped like a knife. Okay. Let's see if I can get it on the screen. For, uh, it's dirty. Can you all hear Lewis okay right now? They'll hear me in the in the recorded version. Yeah, Nobody watches the live channel anymore. Okay. Well, they might be because I tweeted it. But oh, shit. Yeah. <laughs> okay. okay. Shit. So this, see, see how this is shaped like a knife? You're yeah. gonna kind of want to be adding solder, but kind of like filing your nails, like back and forth over here. So you, the whole idea is to reflow these joints okay. in the bottom right that look like shit. Got it. So, what? Um, so are you just now again? Are you? Uh, I want to see you add a right amount of flux. Sure. None of that, don't do sure, that, Paul. Sure, sure, sure. Shit. Is it a? Uh, how much are you scraping with this versus just running across no, it? No, just gently like this. Just across it? Yeah. Okay. So don't dig, in other words. Yeah, you're not, we're not digging. We, right, we right, want right. to be making contact on those joints. Is uh, You want the same amount of flux as you did a minute ago? Or should I use... Uh, that, that's, that's, that'll suffice. That'll suffice. That's good. Okay. Now, you're going to go back and forth, but while adding solder. And here's okay. the thing. The excess solder that you're adding is going to go up on there. Okay. And then after the excess solder that's up on there, you're going to clean it off in this little... Uh, and that thing over there. But do you, at home, do you use a sponge or do you have one of those I little railings? Yeah, yeah. It's, yeah, the sponge never works right. Okay. 
So, first step, am I just going across it without the solder? Uh, you, you, while adding solder. While adding solder, mm -hmm. okay. So using the the scope versus looking at it. You're going to want to use the microscope. You have and, to get... And, yeah. So before you even use the iron, I want you ah, to get used to looking inside the microscope. Sure, okay, yeah. I'm, I'm over here looking at the screen, so... I keep looking at the screen will fuck up your head. I, I used it in the beginning. Yeah. This is the chip I'm working on, right? The worst here? thing you could, that can happen here is you kill an Apple product. And honestly, that's... Oh, I'm okay with that. So that is the chip, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Yep. That's good. And the left leg is good, but the three right legs are covered in that sh corrosion, corroded shit. Got it. Okay. So what am I... <laughs> oh, don't be afraid. Go for it. Go for it. Run for it. Yeah! Uh -oh. All right, I'll do that again. All right. And just going back and forth, like filing your nails. We're stuck. Right. We'll move the board up a little bit so it's easier for them to see in the mic. Oh, sure. Go for it. There you go. You want me to demonstrate the idea on the donut? That would be great. Yeah, yeah. Let me show you the idea. That Thank would you. actually be the proper thing to do here. I'm a schmuck right. of a teacher. So, so let's say we have... Okay, so let, let's say I'm looking at the right side of this chip. Uh-huh, sure. You're going to do something like this. Okay. Make contact, and it's kind of like filing your nails. How do you deal with the blobs that... The blob just gets sucked right up onto the iron. I got it. Okay. And the excess goes there. Got it. You'll actually do better at this than I do. I don't do this much anymore because uh, of the shaky hands. Wow, this is a much better view than I had a second ago. All right. Yes. File. Okay. Any guidance here? I love it. That's good. Stop. Okay, now clean your iron. Okay. All right. That was a good filing. Now you have three joints. Okay. Cool. Next up, I would just... See this one over here, this little resistor? Yeah. On each side, I would do the same thing. So let me, Yeah, just let don't me push just, it too hard because it's very tiny. I pointed out with the solder here so I make sure I got the right one. That one right yep. there? Yes, sir. Okay. And I'm going for both sides of mm -hmm. the top and bottom, basically? Okay. Yep. Wow. I, I think my worst skill here is the scope. There we go. The hardest thing is proprioception. It's like knowing where you are yeah. without seeing. Like I'm bad at this at the gym. My trainer used to go on about this. It's the, the, the ability to tell where a part of your body is without seeing it. And I'd wind up losing my balance in the middle of exercises and falling over. Yeah. Uh, is that something I need to worry about or no? Just where? melt it? No, no. Just go, go just for melt it. it. Run for okay. It. And, and just a little bit more filing. More filing? Yeah, like you're filing it now. And on the other side as well. The reason I'm doing that is because on the other side of it, you see that green shit? Yeah. Anywhere that that green shit went. That corrosion stuff? Okay. Mm -hmm. Should I turn the board for this one? Or would you just go in through? I would just go in on the top like that. Okay. Solder? But yeah. Uh, bonus points if you don't touch the capacitor above that resistor. So you're going to have to angle your iron. So instead of being like this, it's more like this. I see the... Oh, that's not an inductor. That is a cap. Okay, gotcha. You mean the large one, right? Yeah. Okay. I was thinking that's a inductor, but it is a cap. More? Yeah. Okay. Make contact. There you go. Yeah. That wasn't great. So how do we get rid of the... It's not soldered on there. Just poke it with your, with your tweezer. With the tweezer? Okay. Yeah, there's no way that there was enough. There was no heat there, so okay. that, that ball is not stuck to that cap. Got ball. it. Don't, you don't have to pick it up, just poke it. Just poke it? Yeah. Uh, feels feels kind of odd. Is it? Yeah, oh. go for it. Boom. Oh, oh okay. All right. It was, a, it was superficial. Yeah. It was, I'm a little worried about stabbing too hard on something that you're going to have to clean up later. What brings Steve to New York, says Vikasov? Yeah, he said he was considering moving here. <laughs> he considered it way more relaxing and affordable than North Carolina. That's right. Yeah, he said he was a. We, we were actually gonna switch. Yeah, that's right. We're uh, you're gonna you're gonna move to my headquarters, and I'll move into this one, <laughs> and everything will be great. <laughs> I I don't know how you can handle New York. I felt like I was gonna have a breakdown just walking around outside with a because like certain parts of the city it's so loud. 
Yeah, I have my I have my uh, my IEMs in for most of the time, so I can't hear any of it. It's I got them in 2004, and I always have them on when I'm outside. And if I forget them at home for one day, I and I actually realize how loud everything is, it fucks with my head. Yeah. All right, so... Um, also, shouts out to Catherine Anna Hauserman for buying Mr. Clinton a set of greenies. I'm going to do a video of that later tonight. Thank you so much. So do I need to do more work on the top side of that? I think I think that's better. Now I want to see if it turns on. Okay. Well, let's see if we have a fan spin. All right. Do you have a fan spin on your first try? Because, I again, we're going to have a backlight issue and a wi maybe a Wi-Fi issue, but uh -huh. back like that stuff's optional. You know what? So we're looking for fan spin. Yeah, this comment is actually uh, oh, wait, the actually yeah. helpful to me. Is it spinning? Oh wow! So I, I want to come back to this in a second, but the comment from a um, statisticianalist saying just for pretend it's a poorly manufactured riser cable, poke it all you want. That actually is helpful to me because that tells me how much pressure I can apply. Uh, <laughs> do you know the story of the riser cables? I don't know anything about okay. riser cable. Tell okay. me. There's a there was a riser cable that was in a mini ITX case, PCIe mm -hmm. riser cable. And they had a 12 volt power plant at the top that was getting clipped when they would put the screw in. And uh, it was getting clipped because the screw was too large for the hole. And so it was actually screwing into the PCB and not into the case. And, uh, and also, if you scratch the surface of it, then you get like a 12 volt plane. So you could short it to ground into the case. What company made this shit? NZXT. Uh, they have since recalled it, and the, well, the government made them do a recall, but it's they, it got it's, that it's far. It's better now. Yeah, it got that far. CPSC but got involved. Did they know that they were selling it at the time that they were selling it? They knew they were uh, who NZXT. Yeah, I mean, did they know that that flaw existed? Like, did the government tell them, "Hey, by the way, this is a product you may not know is an issue"? No. Or did so they know it was an issue they, and then not, not give a shit? They knew it was an issue. They started shipping plastic screws as a fix, which is really only our concern with that was like, then you're going to have long term. Uh, if the riser gets used later and they put a metal screw in it because they think it's better, you know, now it's the issue's still there. And um, well, also, they never buy from that company. And they, and they were not even shipping. It was taking them months to get the plastic screws out to people. Jesus so Christ. They have fixed it now, but, you know, only after we applied months of pressure. And I would never buy shit from Then them. they fixed it. So, <laughs> so there, there's your story time for it. You fixed the, the MacBook. Well. So, okay, can you, and hopefully they can hear you okay. Um, the edited can version you, will have me. Can you explain to me what exactly uh, got fixed here? Sure. So the, it had no green light in the charger, and in order for it to be able to communicate with the charger, there's a chip called the SMC okay, yeah. over here, uh, System Management Controller. It has to work. Let's find it on the screen. This software was made in Australia by a man named Paul Daniels. What's it called? Flexboard View. Flexboard View, okay. Okay, yeah, so th this chip needs to work. This chip is powered by a rail called PP3V42. Okay. And that rail was missing. So what I usually do when I look at the board is I'll lo take a look over here and try to figure out which rail, uh, like where the corrosion is and what, what's, what is, that, is that for. So this area was corroded. And when you scroll down over here, it says backlight. Backlight, you know, fine. But it's, backlight is not necessary for it to turn on. Then there's this where this thing's plugged in, and this is airport, Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi, okay. that's even less important. They I can see. use Ethernet. But oh, you go over here, and this thing was corroded, and this is a 3.42 volt power supply. Your okay. corrosion was on these three things here, so okay. pins two, three, and four. And that? So two, three, and four. So okay. this over here, all of this was shorted together. Is this the chip wall. name right here? Yeah. Okay. So what this thing does is... Let's get schematic only. It takes the 18 volts from the charger and turns it into 3.42 volts uh, for the system. Okay, got it. I see. And so at this point, now this, if you were uh, working on this for, I guess, for a full repair for a customer, at this point, do you basically just make sure it's all working and you're done? Or do you go through and clean up the other spots? We would I really like your computer down here on the floor, by the way. Yeah, I like the fact that the radiator does is outside the computer because I'm an idiot that doesn't know how to <laughs> no, it's great. put it together. That's a, yeah, Lewis has uh, got what looks like maybe a, not a 680X. Oh, it's a Corsair Air Carbide or something. I think that's It's a, a very overrated case. <laughs> and uh, he's got the um, fans mounted outside of the case with... Uh, 
the front of the case has been replaced with a dust filter. There's no more front of the case. The side panel's off. There's a water, water cooling hose handing out of it. Steve was gracious enough to ask, would you want us to make you a computer? That's the politest way, way I've ever heard somebody say this computer looks like shit. <laughs> Uh, I, I, yeah, so for uh, Twitch chat right there. There you go. Can we hook Lewis up with the new PC? I offered. That's what he was just saying for his mic. I'm, I'm I, a cheapskate. I'm going to be using this. I appreciate the offer. I'm going to be using this computer until 2035. Because <laughs> the computer I had before this one that I put together a few years ago, I was using for uh, about 10 years or so. So you think this will last you for another decade? Probably. So now, what what are you working on now? Just clean up the other spots? Yeah, any area that had even the tiniest bit of corrosion. I am I am actually trying to learn here, and I I've learned a few valuable things so far. Like you can't have enough flux. It's one it, of them. Yeah. So here's uh, the thing. Paul will use this amount of flux, like this, right? Ah, uh, right. This is Paul. That's okay. Yeah. This is proper. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> okay. Never use a Paul amount of flux. Never It'll backfire on you. Amount of flux. Okay. Do you you know those motivational posters they do in offices? Have you ever thought of getting that made and just less putting flux. it up? Always less flux. <laughs> you need like a door cam so you can get people popping in. Yeah, just put, it, the whole idea is to put back together every joint that is either shorted to something else or that is no longer connected. And 99% of the time, this really is just a janitor's job. Okay. You're just being a janitor. Now, sometimes there are capacitors that look like... Again, I don't know if that burn mark is from the liquid or if that burn mark is from uh, yeah, getting something else. Getting stabbed or something. Yeah, so... So what are we looking at? I see an inductor. Are those two, two caps next yeah, to it? This capacitor what? scares me. Okay. It looks like it could be short to ground. But it's not. Where are you seeing? Where were you seeing? You thought was the short. Uh, see this? Yeah. Th that was just dust. Oh, okay. I thought that was an exploded cap, but it, yeah, three three thousand ohms. Yeah, that's fine. That's that's thousand. I, f I fucked up my scenes in OBS. That's why you can't see oh, okay. the thing. That's there. And then you just go through every section of the board where you see like, see over here. You there's. Uh, what what would be a warning sign to you on that? The one you just looked at. Uh, like just zero or yeah if it was zero or like if it was 0. 0.000, 000. Okay. but that, that also had a k in it that you couldn't see on the screen because right. i suck at using obs but <laughs> that was 3000 ohms and then you, you see over here where the solder is starting to come off yeah so you want to go through the this is going to come off in the ultrasonic cleaner but my idea is if the solder is coming off that means that these components are barely hanging on there so So I want to go through each one of those components and kind of juice up the joints a little bit. Right. So what, um, I know you've done this in a video. I actually watched one of your videos, I was years old, about flux. What, uh, can you explain to me like the core function of flux? What? It allows solder to flow. So I'll show you, what, this is what happens without flux. Let's see if I have an example there. Does it just stick without flux basically? Oh, I'll just show you. So I'm gonna burn out all of the flux over here. Okay. Just turn the HDR back on. And for Twitch, he's demoing flux versus no flux. All right. Okay. See, see how yeah, it looks yeah. like a Hershey's Kiss? The, the, yeah, the spiky joint. Yeah, it, it, it doesn't flow. Okay. It looks like that. Is then flux this, something that you need to uh, thoroughly clean up? Is it conductive at all? This flux is not conductive. It's not conductive. Is you could leave it there. It's conductive? not a... There, there, yeah, there is. Okay. So there's, now this is with flux. I see. Creates a nicer little. Right, way way better. Okay. They're saying your sound is fine right now. That's good. Okay, cool. Yeah, for those who showed up late, I only have one wireless transmitter at the store, so I'm recording my audio track to my Zoom, and I'm gonna put it on the main channel version. Sorry. Why does this guy sound like Steve from GM? <laughs> do I sound like Do I sound like that guy? You sound very similar. I sound like Steve from GM. That's weird. Oh, or something like this. You want to so go what, through? What is, is that? It looks like it's a scene from Alien or something like. Nasty corroded shit. Uh, is that really just corrosion? I guess yeah. so. 
it and th this is how you learn it's yeah there are all these areas that are corroded and the way you learn what each area does is like the computer comes in with x problem uh -huh. and it's corroded in y spot so then you you realize that corrosion matters in this spot means you don't have wi-fi and or corrosion in this spot means that it'll be taking 20 milliamps instead of 500 right. in the power supply okay is most of this all water damage basically yeah liquid damage i guess more appropriately When do you feel like you got good at this? Like, how how f far sort of into playing around with it? You know, do you feel like you actually got pretty good? I started trying to do this in 2009, and I didn't feel comp semi competent until 2014. Okay. So five years. What? what I had the slowest learning curve. I mean, it took me a long time to figure out what I'm doing too. It's weird because there are people on my in my comments that'll say, you know, I wish I was that good. I, like, I'm 18 months in, and I'm like 90% of the way there. It's like it took That's me five. Good. Yeah, but yeah. it's like it took me five years to yeah, be yeah. even remotely. I, I I was probably the slowest learner of, including most of the people that actually listen and watch this channel. Right. right yeah. Well, I just didn't record it because well, then nobody would send anything here. What but. um, which skills do you think were like? Is there a certain skill you can remember was particularly difficult for you to learn? Reballing a chip. Reball. Okay. We're one of the. Uh, it's, and the rest of the junk is going to come off in the ultrasonic cleaner. All that little little rubbish. So like this up here, is that something you're going to clean yeah, up? Yeah, like the, 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 cl the ultrasonic oh, cleaner is going to get rid of all that. Got it. The, the, the part that's hard is, let's say, a, ch a chip like this has 96 balls under it. Uh -huh. And you have to take... Uh, I would have to take this chip off and then... Is take manual for yeah, you, and like, put, to, to reball it? Or there's, is there a there's, a, there's a jig, but you have to find a jig for each chip. And if you uh, don't have uh, a jig for that chip, then you have to tape the chip to the desk and then find a stencil. <laughs> or if you don't have a stencil, then you have to manually put each of the individual balls there, which okay. I have seen people do All before. Right. But that's no fun. So for, um, for reballing it, is it basically... It's like a stencil then, I guess. And then um, do you use a special machine or... To flow at all when you're done hey, or oh. do you just heat it with a hot air gun or what you just heat it with this oh that's it okay yeah there's a paste that you put on there mm. uh, so here you got a paste the paste goes in the top you wipe it off it, the paste fills up all the little holes in the stencil okay you use that is it a solder paste is that what it is yeah in an ideal world it would work mm. half the time the balls try to jump out of the holes okay. at you and then combine into the other hole and become a bigger ball yeah, and right that, that's all part of the fun of, of, we, of this we've, job. I've seen this in large quantities at um, motherboard factories where, I don't know if you've you ever seen like a motherboard get made. Uh, like I've never seen a board get made. Okay, you should, uh, uh, we've got videos on it, but if you ever get over to Taiwan, there's a good factory. But anyway, they have, um, I guess, I don't know if solder mask is the right word. I think that's the right word. But they have a mask that they apply to the blank PCB. Uh, and then there's this big brush like um, I was like just like a toothbrush except ginormous, and all it does is apply like solder paste across the whole board. This the mask, they pull the mask off, and then they send it through the oven, and that's it. Like it's, take it all the that's, solder. That out of sounds the board. very sexy. It's it's I gotta super watch cool. This. It's super cool. That's why I was asking if there's like a machine you can use, but uh, it probably is. It's just the cost of the machine is well, gonna and be the, and the space cost for you, right? In New York, like. You, well, you also have to have the balls be the right size. So that they're soldering it after every, they're soldering something on after it's already balled. I imagine. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah. when they manufacture the chips, they come with the solder balls on them. Right. 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 Is, uh, kick that off, please. The uh, down here. I have to get a remote for it. Paul has a remote in his desk. Thank you very much. So you fixed the board. It didn't have fan spin. You put your soldering iron ah, to the board. Right, it had right, fan spin. Right. Hey, good job, uh, Lewis. Good job, you. Nah, I I do genuinely appreciate the coaching though, like because. Um, so I, w I have a few key areas I know I'm pretty weak in knowledge wise and I don't do much soldering uh, whenever I do though every time like I, I really need to find time to sit down and just work on basic skills so like for me it's been my biggest problem has been um, I think some stuff that would be extremely basic for you like like um, determining is this the right type of head on the soldering iron right like uh, or when you're making contact or not because like you could it, sometimes people will grab will touch the chip like this instead of like this ah right like, well, what i see a lot of people do is like they'll have a giant a joint that's, that looks like this and they'll have an iron that looks like like this uh -huh. and they'll do this instead of 
this. Got it, right. Because like 800, th- this little 800 degrees is the same technically 800 degrees as this, but it's, it's a lot less effective. Okay, yeah. And then uh, I, I feel a little bit better using the microscope after being here. Um, but one of the things I do at home, and I should probably s- switch to the actual like optics because I try to use a monitor, and I feel like I'm nothing makes sense because <laughs> you, know, like, you got the monitor off at a 45 degree angle from where you're working. I've tried looking into a monitor with a digital microscope because every, you know that you can get them cheaper. I've never been able to, yeah. I feel nauseous. Like it makes me sick trying to actually look at it while I'm doing it. I, I can't right. figure out how to do that. Yeah. So what, um, it, I guess for working on boards like this, is this kind of the most common type of issue you see at this point? Like, like corrosion and liquid damage? Yeah. It's just, easy repair? Or? Yeah, it's, uh, well, depending on the model of the board. Some of them, it's just, you know, an easy peasy three volt circuit that doesn't work uh-huh. on some boards the liquid always goes where uh, on a 12 something that turns 12 volts into yeah. one volt for the cpu okay. those suck because it's the exact same thing it's just yeah. you know that the cpu got 12 volts every single time right. and they don't they don't like that and like yeah. the core 2 duo you could send 12 volts to and it, it's okay but it's that, that that was a really 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 long time yeah ago. that doesn't that doesn't happen no like right. modern no, no, like kb lake or sky lake yeah, CPUs. You're like one point something now like one one point one point five is getting kind of dangerous you know like with liquid nitrogen, the max will go up to is you get into like 1.8, 1.8, 1.9 territory. Uh, Even a core to do, I think, was 1.65, 1.3 volts, but they could yeah. survive a quick 12 volt hit before it turned off. This, a quick 12 volt, it's just, it's completely dead, it's dead. and yeah, destroyed. Yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Which, so on a lot of the new, it really, whether or not it's easy to fix or hard to fix depends on where the water tends to land in that model and what is usually there. They're saying new intern. Can I have a job? Absolutely. Okay. All right. And yeah, now I can. I'll get a mop and start cleaning the no, floor. I have a place that works here. I can. We, we, we should switch. Let's All do right, a week sure. of switching. Yeah. Let's you, switch. No, you do board repair here. Uh, you I build pretend computers. I build computers that look like this. There. <laughs> well, I'll edit looks... in a picture of this shit for the uh, for the video uh, that goes in the main channel. Uh, I want to do a build for. Uh, we'll see what we can work out. I think you would Either fix motherboards. Do Paul's build or do a new one for you here? I think you would fix motherboards way better than I would build computers. I g- uh, give it a week or two. Uh. I don't know about that. I don't have I don't think I have the patience to do what you do. I don't have the patience to even put my case back together. Yeah, well, but that's a different type of patience. This doesn't it doesn't need the, the case doesn't need to be It also leaks. It works, like right? hi hi reef it was making a weird noise the other day and then hi hi noticed the water loop had bubbles all over it and it's like I don't know what the fuck I'm doing. It could be the loop had bubbles, like like air bubbles or like water? Uh, it was like air bubbles, gonna, and then the reservoir was almost all the way down. Board to repair here, and it's going to come out of there. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it could be um, a fitting, because the, each of the fittings has an O-ring, a rubber O-ring, and the, that's the most common point of failure on an open loop, is uh, the O-ring will dry and crack. I thought I was too stupid to put together my own loop, so I bought that Enermax TR4. And then it started making weird noises, and then I yeah. looked at your review of it, yeah. and I face palmed immediately for ever buying that piece of shit. Almost, I think they recalled all of them. I, don't, I doubt they got them all back, but it was like a, basically a one hundred percent defect rate. So, did they uh, great? Did they refund people for those? They said they were going to. I helped several people get refunds because they were being denied, and then they would email us, and then I would email Enermax and say, "I never know, got my money back for that." I yeah. figured I could just buy, like, if they're not going to refund me, I could just do the old school, buy another one and return the old one in the box yeah, thing, but then I just have that. another piece of shit. <laughs> so by not, by not ever releasing a version that doesn't suck, they fucked up my ability <laughs> to even scam them to get my money back. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They, they tried several times, but I think most people just gave up and got a different cooler. Well, Steve Pet Clinton later on. Cat collaboration. My cat is cat not here, unfortunately. Mr. Clinton. I've I've seen a lot of Mr. Clinton in the videos. Uh, Anna sent me all those greenies. Thank you, Anna. Oh, really? I have to give them to my kitty. The greenies from uh, a viewer? Yeah. She's a mod, and she, okay. she, my cat's going to scream when he gets those. Yeah. He's a crackhead. Does he chase him if you throw him, or does he uh, look at you like you've done him wrong? I don't know. If I throw it, like, he'll see where it's about to land and immediately jump. Okay, great. Yeah, he's st- still active then. Yeah, so the board, I feel... Um, I think the the biggest differences here with your setup and mine, other than the professional level of tools and everything, but I don't have a hot air gun, so that's the difference. Uh, I've got a board heater that it's it's just like um, you know it's just uh, 
I don't know, like some heating elements under a grid and then you suspend the board. Um, so I have that. I don't have an air gun though. And I felt like that made things a little bit easier than what I'm used to. Once Do you, you ever use board heaters here or? Uh, yeah, they have a preheater over there. And okay. when you're replacing a CPU or a GPU on a board, that the machine has a preheater built into it. I see. For okay. these, I just wind up preheating it just using that. Like I just hold it from far away and then I slowly right. go on it. Cool. Then the other thing is uh, the tip you have on the soldering iron here is much finer than what I'm working with. But I don't know. I was working on different stuff. so. Yeah, if you tried to use that for something like a GPU shunt resistor, it would just get destroyed. Just because it's not enough. It's a, yeah, it's pulls all the heat out of it, basically. Way too tiny. Yeah. yeah. We, I, have a big, I have a 250 watt iron that I'd probably use for that. that okay. That's the one that I use for, for bike stuff. I see. Yeah. Yeah, because I mostly work with like the shunt, like the 5 million shunt resistors. Does it th does the iron you have work or does it take feel like it's taking forever and the board is just eating up all the heat? Uh it feels like it's the last time I did it felt like it was taking forever and like I would have to like kind of wait till it hit the max temperature and then try. How often do you do this? Mm, twice a year and and every time I do it's like maybe eight shunt resistors. Do you plan to do it again? Yeah. Yeah, I I have something for you to take and try. Okay. He's Lewis is getting something from off off camera. What video card is being worked on? So I wasn't working on a video card. I was working on a board he had here from a, what was it from Lewis? A MacBook Air? Yeah, uh, it's a MacBook Air, MacBook 2004, Air. 15. And uh, as for, to answer the question though, the video cards I was working on in, incompetently, I'm not good at this, was uh, they were 3090s and 3080s. I did get the mod done, but um, so the mod that we showed on the channel was a uh, piggyback shunt resistor mod where you take like a 5 milliohm shunt resistor, put it on top of another one, and NVIDIA's logic uh, uses those shunt resistors to try and evaluate how much power is going to the core, and it limits it to a certain wattage. So if you put another one on there, uh, you can trick it to consume more power than it will normally allow, which is only useful for overclocking and, and nothing practical, but that's why I was doing it. Try this. Oh, wow. You don't need this? Can I, can I pay you for it? I crimp now. Okay. <laughs> Enjoy. I got the free labor of you I, fixing a board. I, I, <laughs> the, yeah, but you taught me to do it. I do crimping for all of my electric bike stuff now. Okay. And I my appreciate controller it. is sealed, so there's no repair. So, um, so the way this works yeah. is when you plug it in. Any settings or anything, or you just plug it in and it's Oh, uh, you got on and honor. <laughs> okay. <laughs> On and more on. So this is it. Okay. So this is a little on, and that's a lot on. Got it. And it, it the, the is it just this one head for it? This is all you get. This okay. One, this yeah. one head, this one tip. And then uh and it but it doesn't matter how much the board absorbs heat, this is gonna heat it up. Because it's it. two hundred and sixty watts. You just have to make sure that this is screwed in properly because it can become loose. And once it becomes loose, it doesn't conduct properly. Anymore. Okay. But you do this and... So for... And I guess the reason the, um, the smaller soldering tips for something that's... It, so is the problem that it's... What I'm working on is a larger component, like a shunt resistor, or is the problem that the board is soaking so much heat uh, it could be the well. The, the shunt resistor is going to be in an area where all the power that goes to the card is right. passing through it, or all the power that passes that particular chip is passing through it. So it's going to be the board is heats is is take grabbing soaking a lot of it, it away from you. The okay. board is soaking all of it away from you. Right. So you could either a heat preheat the board and then use a smaller iron, or b just you know use a bigger iron. Uh, yeah. Okay. yeah. <laughs> I appreciate it. Also, if you if I plug this in and you try hitting the trigger, one thing that's really cool is you can actually he feel the transformer vibrating in your hand. <laughs> Wait, yeah, try this. Wow, that is actually. Noticeable. I know it vibrates in your head. So is this? This is that your. That didn't on sound right. And Pause. this is more on. Yeah. Okay. You have two. <laughs> Rossman Real Estate. What is he fixing? Knob and okay, I don't know what the question is there. Steve, this is super heavy duty stuff for GPU power. That one will be plentiful, plenty powerful. It definitely uh, is a lot more than what I'm what I've been trying to use. So also, if you... I'll let you know how it goes because I, I have one I want to do some work on soon, so... If you want to deal with, like, 4-gauge or 8-gauge wire for your electric bicycle... Yeah. Yeah, my uh, 
my completely street legal electric bike. <laughs> that was almost <laughs> believable. <laughs> it's I I can ride it uh, as long as nobody sees it. Then it's not a problem. That really. I, I'm surprised that in New York City, I've never been pulled over with an e-bike that is clearly illegal. And, and, and you actually get regulated harder in North Carolina with an electric bicycle that you bought. You didn't build some yeah, crazy shit yeah. and then use a controller that puts four times the rated wattage into your motor <laughs> so that you can go 50 miles an hour. Right. You are using a store-bought ass be- no, store bought e-bike built by somebody else, probably certified, UL, yeah. all that shit. And you get pulled over. Yeah. I ride some crazy ass shit that I put together here in the back of my store. Oh, it's because I and see And nobody you, gives they, a fuck. They see yours and they're afraid it's going <laughs> to explode or something. <laughs> they don't want to stop you because they're afraid of it. <laughs> I don't want to be near that thing. No. Or they know you as the guy with the uh, other e-bike. That's it right there, right? Yeah. The fire one. Yeah, that, that was scary. When you posted about that, that made me sort of question my... Uh, it's like when we were working with the NDXT riser cable with the fire hazards where every now and then you see something bad enough and you're like, wow, I, this makes me question all electronics now. Yeah, one of the things that I do with any of the e-bike batteries that I buy before I actually use them is... Uh, oh, do you have a tester or something? Well, no, one thing I like to do is I actually open them and inspect them now before ah, I put okay. them in my bike. I want to see what you create, how do you wire it. Right. Do you actually use the cells you claim you use? Because right, a right. big thing with e-bikes is they'll lie. They'll tell you we're using Samsung 35E or 30Q or whatever, and they'll put some other bullshit in it. So if you open the e-bike batteries that you get, you'll often realize that the seller didn't sell you what they claimed they right. sold you. So I open up all the stuff before I actually put it in my bike. That's now. what happened to you on this one, right? It was no, no, not this one. That was the okay. other. Oh, no, that has a frame. The one that I, the other one, like the frame yeah, is yeah. literally just poof. Yeah, oh, okay. they, they claimed they were giving me Samsung 35E cells. I paid extra for it. You open it. It's just bullshit. Yeah. No name, no brand, no nothing. Right. So I, I like EM3V. I'm a big shill for them because this, the, 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 the internal construction, no sponsor or anything, it's fucking beautiful. Like you pay more money, but th- th- there's craftsmanship that goes into how right. they put that together. And it's, it's absolutely beautiful. Like the way the, the, there's temperature sensors, it'll automatically turn off if it's too hot, too cold. They very, very conservatively rate their power ratings. Like that one, that can easily do RMS of 3000 and they rate it at RMS of 1500. There's a... You you might like this. There's an attachment I wired into mine that it's just a small computer with a micro SD card reader on it, and um, it'll do GPS tracking of the bike, and it'll do uh, which is useful for multiple things, with theft being one of them. But um, it'll do GPS tracking, and then it also does uh, logging of temperature of the internal components and speed. So you can create like a GPS map of your route if you want. You can check the temperature of the whatever component it's monitoring over time. But I, it was cool because um, I used it for hub motor temperature and tried attaching different heat sinks to the hub motor externally. And there are all these heat sinks that are marketed for this online, and none of them did anything. Like they, because it's too far removed from the source of the heat at that point. It's on the outside of the motor, right? So, um, but. Uh, yeah, they're pretty cool. You just wire it right into the... I actually have that same uh, readout on mine. Wire it in, and you get a computer on your bike. Another computer on your bike. <laughs> I like the thing that it, it tells... The one that I have, it's a cycle analyst. It'll tell me how many yeah, watt hours yeah. a mile I'm using and all that stuff. Uh, so I can, tr- I can try to like, learn how to dr- ride more efficiently. Like, I always try to see, can I get myself down to 20 watt hours a mile for my, my trip home? You actually try to ride more efficiently on it? Yeah, you know, just go full throttle. I guess you probably can't even go full throttle with the traffic here anyway. But. If you go on the side of it, but that's another yeah. story altogether. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Well, thank you very much for coming No, thank by. you. I, I really appreciate, appreciate it. it. No, I, I appreciate the education. I've learned a lot. I feel like I can make use of some of that. And, uh, I look forward to your next GPU shunt video. Yes, with you will see that. 260-watt <laughs> gun. <laughs> You'll see that in the next one. <laughs> thank right. you. See you. Sorry for the shit audio on the main channel. I'm going to upload this. I'm a schmuck. I forgot to bring my wireless transmitter with me, so I'm actually recording this to my inter- this thingy, and then I have to put it into the main audio later. Anyway, see y'all. See you in the next one.